Good day, Paul Harvey fans. It's hard to imagine that some people would be welcome in your home while others may not be welcome in your home, depending on their social standing, how they dress, or where they live. I like to think that we've come a long way since then. In this broadcast of the rest of the story, Paul Harvey will explain one such story. If you grew up on a diet of cow country music and hillbilly ballads, then you're familiar with the name Lonzo Green. Great country singer. But he was a stranger in town that summer. He would brought his wife and a couple of youngsters all the way from Cherry Valley, Arkansas, to visit relatives in Tennessee. But as I say, he was a stranger in town. He was unaccustomed to the local customs and to the local taboos. So Lonzo was a little surprised to learn that a friend of his young nephew, under no circumstances, was to be allowed into the house. His teenage nephew, Jimmy, had proudly, excitedly spread the word around school that Uncle Lonzo, the musician, had come to town and he was staying with them right there in their apartment on Lauderdale Court. And naturally, this impressed Jimmy's young friends, especially one, a, a quiet, dark-haired boy of 15. Jimmy came home that day. He told Lonzo about the boy, how he had his own guitar, but he didn't know how to tune it. And if Lonzo would just tune the guitar for him, I, the boy, would be so grateful. Lonzo said he'd be happy to oblige, he asked Jimmy, when his friend could come with his guitar. And then uh, Jimmy's eager smile faded. His friend could come by that afternoon, but Mom and Dad had made it a firm rule that the boy was not to be allowed inside. He was as they said in those days, from the wrong side of the tracks. They had explained, well, some folks called him uh, white trash. Maybe he could meet Lonzo outside, but he was not permitted in the house. Lonzo did not quite understand, but he nodded. He said nothing. A couple of hours later, he walked out into the sunlight and waited, and in a minute or two, the figure appeared at the end of the lane, a boy with a dark hair and a battered guitar slung across his back, and as the boy walked closer, Lonzo studied the sensitive features, the timid sidewise glances at this, this better neighborhood. The sting of self-consciousness was apparent. Then he noticed that the boy's guitar, obviously inexpensive, doubtless secondhand, was tethered by a piece of string. Well, they met at the curb, they shook hands, the youngster gave a shy, slight smile, and there at the curbside they sat down, right on the curb, and Lonzo took the instrument from the boy. Nobody had ever shown him how to tune his guitar, ever, with a soft, polite southern drawl. The lad said, no, sir, nobody ever did. And then Lonzo demonstrated. He placed his fingers in the proper frets, and the boy watched intently, and after the guitar was tuned, he thanked Lonzo. He began to get up from the curb, but Lonzo would not let him leave, for he, Lonzo, had tasted poverty back in Arkansas in his own youth, and he had known the other side of the neighborhood barrier, which separated acceptable from unacceptable people, how such a little kindness from the right person would have meant back then. So Lonzo asked this dark-haired boy to stay a little while longer, and the hesitant smile now broke into a broad grin, and with the little lad's inexpensive guitar, Lonzo played and sang one familiar hill country ballad after another, after another, and shortly the haunting reticence in the boy's eyes was gone, replaced by the joy of the music. Cars were streaming past them, the shadows of late afternoon grew long. After Lonzo had taught the boy to play a few chords on the guitar, the youngster thanked him again and was on his way. He was not invited inside. Not then. Lonzo Green would never meet him again. But the boy had left his company with a warm memory, a memory that he would carry throughout his remarkable, radical change in his own life, because someday you would invite that dark-haired boy from the wrong side of town into your home. And when he crossed those tracks for good, he brought with him his guitar, and he brought the soft, polite drawl and the hesitant smile. That was many summers, 33 motion pictures, millions of records, and a lifetime ago. And if there is a happy ending mixed in with our own bittersweet memories, it is that the boy was never ever after unwelcome again. That young fellow who once upon a time was not allowed inside was Elvis Presley. 
Now you know the rest of the story. It's difficult to imagine Elvis being looked upon as white trash. Many people have pointed out that Mr. Harvey made a slight error in this broadcast. If you caught this mistake, tell me in the comments. Keep in mind that Paul Harvey began broadcasting the rest of the story decades before the internet. After listening to this broadcast, I think I'm going to go listen to some Elvis. This is Brad Dyson, as Paul Harvey would say. Good day.